Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office for Saturday, December the 2nd, 2023. In today's video, we are keeping an eye on a couple of big storm systems that are going to be straddling the U.S. this weekend. For tomorrow, all the way into early next week, bringing significant impacts, heavy snowfall for the Northeast, more flooding for the Pacific Northwest, and another storm system by the end of this week could get underway for the Midwest and also again for the Northeast. So we have a lot to talk about in today's update. So as always, here's a look at the 12Z European model. Model for this afternoon for your Saturday and we can see where the rainfall is currently being indicated by the model. So we can see showers and thunderstorms here for the southeast. You can see that um, well painted here with the green colors stretching from, say, Kentucky, West Virginia into Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and the Carolinas. Some showers there, but look at what we got going on. An atmospheric river really hitting the Pacific Northwest, including for Northern California, Washington, Oregon, and of course, we got some snow over Montana. There's going to be more of that coming over the next several days as the weather pattern in the Pacific Northwest remains extremely stormy. We're going to be seeing a lot of flooding, mudslides, debris flows, that sort of thing. So you want to brace yourself for what's to come there uh, while we are keeping an eye on the active weather. So let's kind of move this forward all the way into Tomorrow afternoon, this is for December the 3rd, here comes that storm system. The one that's in the um, southeast right now, it's going to track towards the northeast, bringing a lot of snowfall for these regions, including, again, for Mount Washington in Vermont, New Hampshire, if you're in Maine, just be aware of that. If you're doing anything outdoors tomorrow, it's not a good day to do anything. There's going to be snow mixed with rain. We might even see some freezing rain in some areas. So keep that in mind if you're going to church, if you're uh, wanting to go to a friend's birthday party, just cancel that if you can to prevent a lot of issues, a lot of delays for other people because the weather is just not going to be in anyone's favor there. For the Pacific Northwest, going to continue to see quite a bit of rainfall, flooding, strong winds, heavy snowfall for the mountains, and, and nothing's going to get really any better at all. This is for... Um, Tuesday morning, December the 6th, that system moves out of the region by Monday afternoon, all right, for the Northeast. Maybe some, a uh, little bit of lake effect snow left behind with that because we're going to get some cooler air. But really, a lot of the activity is going to be favoring the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington. You're just going to continue to get rain. That's all there is to it all the way through Wednesday. And then eventually, Northern California, we might get our next chance of showers here for Wednesday, December the 6th, 2023. As you can see here, the green colors, an indication that, yes, we're going to get in on some wet weather. Finally, it's been a dry one for this fall, despite the strong El Nino that is uh, really lurking out there in the eastern Pacific uh, for California. Let's go forward. Uh, let's go into the next weekend. This is for Friday morning. This is for Saturday. Okay, do I rarely go this far out because, you know, the models, uh, there's a tendency that they change quite extremely from run to run. But it's we're beginning to see a little bit of agreement on another potential snowstorm and a big storm for the Midwest. This is for Saturday, December the 9th. 2023 we got the snow here over the high plains we got the rainfall that uh, starts going off into the midwest now i'm not going to go much further except i'm only going to go into sunday night okay do i rarely go this far out in my forecast and that's because there's better agreement that we might have another another powerful storm system look at this very dynamic maybe some severe weather maybe another one of those slight risk or enhanced risk days of severe weather potentially we got a warm front that's anchored here we got a cold front and then we have just very dynamic system, to say the least, with heavy snowfall on the northwestern side of that system over Missouri and Iowa. But I want to make it clear for you all that there is a lot of changes here, and there is no solid agreement on a winter storm just yet. You can see from the zero Z run from last night, it shows where the system was going to be at the exact same time. And here's a 12Z run a little faster as it moves into Indiana uh, about a day sooner. 
uh, with the Pacific Northwest ex still expecting to see more active weather there. The biggest impact that everyone's going to notice is how warmer than average the temperatures are going to be. Right now, it's kind of a mediocre kind of thing. The four corners, below average temperatures, kind of the Midwest, near average, the Southeast, well above average. But it's going to get even warmer than what you're seeing here. And it's because of our polar vortex, folks. It is so weak. In fact, I've never seen it this week in quite some time. More than likely to blame for El Nino because uh, there's more warmer air being locked up in the Arctic and it just does not allow the polar vortex to strengthen like it should be. So we're going to see a weakening of the polar vortex in days to come and this is going to unleash some very warm temperatures. Yeah, you do got some colder air, okay, at first, okay, for the northeast and for the southeast, yes, but it's going to be followed by this really warm anomalous temperature uh, contour that is being represented across the northern tier of the U.S. I mean, come on. I mean, like seriously, folks, you have temperatures up here 40, almost 40 degrees above average over the northern portion of Saskatchewan, if you're in the northern portion there of Manitoba, I mean, come on. This is just disgusting to see on the Euro. All right, you all are probably going to be wearing shorts up there because you're not used to temperatures being this warm. I mean, if we actually look at the actual air temperature up there, I mean, you're going to see temperatures at night and during the day into the mid-30s. I mean, that is just phenomenal. And this warmer air does get going. Look at this. I mean, really warm temperatures for a couple of days here for much of the Midwest. No, no winter. No, there's no Arctic air masses expected. It's going to be definitely a warm one. Uh, and towards the end of the model, I still don't see much in the way of Arctic um, outbreaks. Unless you want to trust the GFS model, the 18Z run, which in my personal opinion is one of the more wild outcomes. I've never seen this and I strongly do not suggest that you all look at the GFS model for a while. I mean, this pattern is so changeable right now that... Some models are showing one of the biggest Arctic outbreaks, while other runs are showing, well, oh, no, we're not going to see anything. So here's a good example. You can see at the very end of the run, of course, look at this. I mean, what in the name of Arctic outbreak are you talking about, GFS? I mean, this is very far out, by the way, okay? This is December the 18th. Do not trust this. But I just wanted to show you guys some examples, because people are going to start tweeting about this. That, oh my gosh, we're going to get an Arctic outbreak. Oh my goodness, here comes winter. Do not trust this. Look at the 12Z run. Look at the 12Z. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Look at the 18Z run. Ooh, it's still warm, right? It's still really warm. So the fact that it's been like this, so warm for the uh, Northern Plains, for Canada, for the last four runs except the 18Z run, still makes me optimistic that this is not going to exist not yet until i see a lot more uh runs that are this consistent it's going to be a very warm one throughout the middle of december and that's what our lovely friends at the climate prediction center are indicating over the next six to ten days it is going to be warmer than average more than likely across the great lakes the upper midwest the deep south the southeast the northeast, it actually is going to be cooler than average chances over Autogen if you're in Boise, Portland, Seattle. Actually not typical with an El Nino. This is quite on the extreme side when you think about it. All because of that very weak polar vortex. The 8 to 14 day forecast, you can see why. I mean, you cannot trust the GFS model. So before you think about what you're going to post on Twitter, think to yourself that, oh, Okay, this is just one run, and it's not like 10 or 15 model runs of the same thing. It's going to be warmer than average, likely, across the Great Lakes for the eastern half of the U.S., with below average temperatures likely, or chances of that leaning above or below, that is, for the Four Corners and the Northeast. Looking at the precipitation anomalies, definitely a wet one uh, for the Midwest, with the 8 to 14-day forecast trending wetter for California, and there are some indications on that. Unless you look at the 18Z run, it wants a death ridge and some record-breaking high temperatures for California, which uh, I just, I, that, that's a nightmare to me. I really, it just, don't trust that 18Z run. Wonky, wonky buddy, um, GFS. But yeah, much of the U.S., oops, what did I do there? Oops. 
Drunk, drunk, drunk. <laughs> Radar Omega. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Let's make you guys dizzy. No, I'm just kidding. You could see above average chances more than possible there for the Midwest. I almost forgot to take a look at this, folks. This is from the Weather Prediction Center. And yes, that storm that is expected over the next couple of days will bring the slight risk for flooding across southern Georgia into western Florida, including for southern portion there of, say, Alabama and even Mississippi, where you're under a slight risk for heavy rainfall and flood concerns. Not only that, the Pacific Northwest, you are under a marginal risk for heavy rainfall and flooding there all the way from Salem into Eugene. If you're in Coos Bay, just keep that in mind. It's not looking very good. In fact, day two looks even worse. I mean, come on. Slight risk for heavy rainfall all the way from Brookings, Coos Bay. If you're in Florence, Newport, Seaside, Astoria, yeah, you're going to see the atmospheric rivers. And that continues all the way into day two where Seattle and some of the mountains there are under a marginal to slight risk for intense rainfall and flooding. Now, you may be asking me, why is this weather pattern so crazy? Why are we seeing big storms? Why are we seeing some warmer temperatures? Well, you can blame it on number one, El Nino. That is holding pretty strong right now. In fact, my analysis indicates that we're already approaching super El Nino territory with the latest 3.4 uh, Nino index running at about 2.28 degrees Celsius above average, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that is very, very, that's a big deal. That really is. And so what it's going to do is it's going to allow our subtropical jet to run stronger than usual this winter, which means areas that normally see some Arctic outbreaks might see less of those this coming winter. Even so, some people are already speculating that, oh, El Nino's not really here yet. Eh, come on. We're all, we're just beginning meteorological winter, folks. Give it another 15 to 18 days, and then you'll probably come back and look at me like, oh, 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 okay, David. Okay, I see. It's not going to be cold this winter for the northern tier. Yes, we might see one or two, maybe three or four more of these Arctic outbreaks. Very quick, very brief. Not going to persist very long. And that's because of this. Look at this subtropical jet here for this weekend. Going to actually strengthen. See some of the pink colors. The winds at that level are over 200 knots. And why we look at the layer here is this is where a lot of our weather dynamics comes from. This is why we see winter storms. We see these surface lows uh, bomb out because we have strong jet stream winds here. In this case, that's probably what's going to end up happening for the Northeast. We're going to get a very intense winter storm because of that subtropical jet that is in place. Things really back off. We get more ridging in the Midwest and the East, and that's why... Uh, we're going to see warmer temperatures. Also, the flow turns more zonally. We're not seeing much of a wavy jet, and that's going to allow a very little in the way of Arctic outbreaks, and that continues all the way through perhaps um, the next 5 to 10 days. And you can see another subtropical jet looking pretty strong here for the Midwest, and that would be where our next Midwest storm comes from potentially on the Euro model. With that being said, I want to show you something very cool that I created over the last week or so on the computer here, of course, in my home weather office, is my new website. And I want to share this with you all really quickly before I close down the video. Is first of all, I shared this in a community post, and some of you already like it very much. And so if you haven't visited it yet, I would highly recommend doing so. There is a link in the description below this video leading to the SacramentoWeatherCenter.com website. All right. But it's really actually Sacramento Weather Center office or weather forecast office that I do. And you can see my about page uh, about who I am. I'm going to add more to this over time. So uh, expect more updates to the website to come, including my most important. That's kind of why I created this is my blog. So if you guys want to get my updates almost on an everyday basis, you can go check out my blog by clicking blog once you get to the website. You can see it right here. And then, of course, the most exciting thing is the links. 
All the links that I use for my weather forecasts and others that I'm adding to this will be listed here. So if you want to check out the National Weather Service, you can click the link and it takes you right to the National Weather Service. If you want to go to, let's just say, the atmospheric river scale, some of you um, may wonder what this actually is. You can learn more about it here by going to the atmospheric river uh, by clicking the link. Uh, all the links are just here. Zoom Earth included. Um, you can um, check this out too, these programs that I use. Very exciting, and I'm excited to present you all this. And then, of course, you can see the disclaimer, and you can also show your support by making a $5 donation today to help keep the website running smoothly. You can also check out my Twitter page. There's a link in the description below this video leading to my Twitter page where you can get also updates on what's going on across the United States, especially with what the Euro show last night. I don't know how extreme you can get with this pattern. I made a tweet and a lot of people actually liked it. Really wavy. What if that came true, right? What would it be like, right? I'll tell you what, I'll give a little bit of a spoil alert. If a ridge like that builds over the eastern portion of Siberia, you could have temperatures 90 degrees above average. Okay, but then you go across the Bering Sea uh, into Alaska where you could have temperatures 40 to 50 degrees below average. So yeah, showing you the extreme of what these troughs can actually be. That's a very good example of what a very wavy amplitude wave pattern looks like on a model. Well, anyways, I sure hope this video helped you out a lot, folks, because it really means a lot to me. I really enjoy making these videos for you all as often as I can possible. Okay, and so if you want to show your awesome support for the work that I do here on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing right now if you haven't, and also make sure you hit the bell notification icon. A lot of people forget to do that, and they're asking me, why am I not getting notifications? Make sure you hit the bell icon, and it says all. All notifications, not some notifications, all notifications. Okay, that's very important, and also... Most importantly, you hit the like button to uh, let me know how you like the video and leave a comment in the section below this video. But anyways, that is going to sum it up for today's weather forecast. I should be back with another video tomorrow. Sundays now are more tougher than typical because... I have church, and then after that, I go to work, so I don't know if I will have a video out tomorrow, but hopefully on Monday, I will remain, or I will return to normal scheduling with my uploads. That's going to do it. Thank you all for watching.